It is uh, 7.08, and I'd call to order uh, the Air Shirley Regional High School School Committee meeting for Tuesday, February 6th, 2024. Um, remind me if we do roll before I read the wiretap statute. First, then roll. Great. All right, those attending tonight's meeting should be aware that the meeting is being audio and video recorded by APAC and ASRSD. Any audience members who wish to record any part of the meeting must inform the chairperson who will announce the recording. This is to comply with the mass wiretap statute. The listings of matters are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed, and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. Per the ASRSD school committee policy, public comment is not a discussion, debate, or dialogue between citizens and the school committee. It's a citizen's opportunity to express any or express an opinion on issues of school committee business. Citizens will have three minutes to express their views. Any staff members addressing the committee are reminded of their obligations under state and federal student record laws with respect to maintaining the confidentiality of student information and refraining from disclosing any personal identifying information regarding students. That we can move to roll. Mr. Bragnan, Mrs. Bernard. Here. Mr. Quinty. Here. Mrs. Reshoes. Here. Mr. Rupert. Here. Ms. Van. All right. Pledge of Allegiance. There's a flag over here. Pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Then we just do that. For two. <laughs> two for two. Oh, do we have our high school representatives? Um, no, unfortunately, one. Uh, one student had to work, and it was a little too late for the other. All right. So they'll join us at the next Perfect. The first March meeting. Great. Um, moving on, any public participation? On the Zoom, in the room, round up some kids from the basketball game, get their <laughs> perspectives. There is nobody online. All right. Well, let's move on to the consent agenda. Um, we have the regular session regular session minutes from January 23rd. Um, AP warrants uh, 1119, 1120, payroll warrant 14, 14.1, payroll warrant 15, payroll warrant 15.1. Any discussion? Or we'll move to a motion. I'd make a motion to approve the regular session minutes and the AP and payroll warrants. Second. All right. Motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Moving on to new business, I would like to table this topic because Ms. Spann is not here to. Ms. Spann is on her way. She was just dealing with a um, home issue. Perfect. Well, we will table it till she arrives. Maybe we could move on to the superintendent report. Absolutely. Um, we are going to have a special guest to read the sports report. Um, our athletic director, Mr. Kendall, is in the house. He will come down to present that part. Whenever he that is will free. Make, <laughs> that will make uh, Joyce very happy. Um, we are. We have a revised last day of school. We've had two snow days so far this school year. Uh, this would make the last uh, day of school now Friday, June 14th, which is a half day for all students and staff. Um, I believe a revised calendar was provided to you in your packet. Um, we do need a school committee vote in order to change the calendar so that we would ask that you approve that uh, tonight. Great. Would you like us to do that now, or would you prefer that we go through the rest of the announcements? Um, the report. Let's. Um, Great. Any sure. discussion on the calendar and the change for the snow days? Great. Then I would entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we revise the, uh, the calendar due to, unfortunately, a lack of snow 
on to Friday 14th, which will be a half day for school of school for students, taking out our extra snow Any budget we have. Great. Second. <laughs> All right. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We've got a new last day of school. Okay. We providing we don't have some other problems. Well, after. providing we, we <laughs> don't. I mean, April Fool's Day is always good for a snow day. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Just kidding. The last few years. <laughs> some of our biggest snowstorms have been in March. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> not it out of the woods yet. <laughs> no. There will be a meeting in uh, the in Groton, the neighboring towns uh, budget, um, public budget forms uh, in the Air Street um, budget presentation on Monday, February 12th. Sorry, let me, let me try that again. There, there is an open forum held in Groton on February 12th. Um, some of our neighboring towns and ASRSD will be present to share our budget concerns with some local representatives. Uh, this is happening in the Groton in Dunstable. Our hosting uh, the delegation meeting forum at 615 at the Groton Center. It's 163 West Main Street. We are attending. We did meet with our local representatives today. We met with um, Senator Cronin's office. He sent two representatives. Um, Senator Elridge and Representative Cena were there. Uh, we gave the uh, presentation that we had given to school committee, the select boards and FinCOMs of, of Aaron Shirley, as well as um, some other issues that we believe are creating the budget squeeze that we are currently facing. Uh, they were receptive uh, to the information and did let us know that they would be advocating for us uh, just short of any any promises, which is which is understood. Uh, we do plan on attending though, and um, with our neighbors to to reiterate uh, the problem that is happening specifically for small regionals, and there really is a problem that is specific to um, small regionals and the budgeting process at the state. On March, the March 5th school committee meeting, to, to move on unless there are any questions on that. Sorry. Um, we received notification from the town of Shirley's clerk's office that Tuesday, March 5th, is the presidential primary election. It is also the presidential um, primary election for AIR. We have a school committee meeting scheduled at 6.30 where we will certify the fiscal year 25 budget. The regional budget needs to be certified 45 days prior to the first town meeting, which will be held in air on April 22nd at 7. If the committee so chooses, we could reschedule the Tuesday, March 2nd meeting to Wednesday, March 6th, or even Monday, March 4th, to accommodate those who wish to vote in the presidential primary election. Had we, I feel like we have discussed this meeting several times, and is it that we kept saying, well, we'll discuss it when we get to right. that point? Okay. If, if I may, we yeah. did. We're at that point. Great. We did. I, was like, I feel like we've <laughs> talked about do we cancel it, do we move it? We There's have taken measures it. of yeah. not scheduling. We, have, we, we purposely did not schedule meetings on days that we knew there were going to be elections. Right. right. The primary election did slip by us. Yeah. Right. Yes, Trent. Um, Mr. Chair, um, would it be, it seems like it would be better to bump it up to Monday because of the time needing to do it in case, I don't know. When you're we, running we, so tight on budget and stuff there and thoughts and if something happens and we need to We don't something. have a preference. If you don't care. Whatever don't is easier for, for the school committee, we're happy. Is there a preference from others in the group between Monday and Wednesday? Yeah, either one works for me. Flip a coin or Joyce if Monday's preferable. I'll make then a we motion can... that we move the um, and then we can vote it down or whatever. Great. Um, the March 5th <laughs> meeting to March 4th, Monday night. Uh, where are we having this? At This would be the first meeting of the month, so it would be the high school. Here, here at the high school in the, light, in the media <coughs> center, old fashioned library, um, <laughs> uh, uh, to not conflict with, uh, with the uh, primary. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I would at this time like to invite our athletic director, Steve Kendall, up to read the sports report. <laughs> Good timing. Half time of the game, I think, right there. That's nice. Uh, up 40 to 13 up there at the varsity game right now. I'll Fantastic. update that as we go through. But it's been a great winter. Uh, our numbers in basketball and track are up. 
Uh, even in the track where we were limited to middle school athletes because we only required a waiver for the kids who participated last year. Uh, our numbers are still up, so we have a lot more high school kids than we've had in the past. Our basketball numbers are up. Uh, swimming, ice hockey, and cheer are, are very steady. And our unified golf program, which we run here in the uh, cafeteria in the hallways, has uh, the biggest numbers we've had since we started the program. So, and numbers-wise, things are great. We have a lot of participation from our student athletes this winter. Uh, it's also gone well on the playing surfaces. Um, both our indoor track teams won league championships on Sunday. We went down to Reggie Lewis Center, had a ton of uh, personal records set by our athletes, and uh, both won for the third year in a row for the boys and the second year in a row for the girls in indoor track. Uh, we have a bunch qualified for the District 2 and 3 championships, which again will be this Sunday at Reggie Lewis Center. So our league this year made a, a bold decision to move our league championship from Fitchburg High School, where they've been traditionally, to Reggie Lewis Center uh, for more professional uh, atmosphere. And uh, from what I was told by the coaches, it was a, a massive success. Uh, and they really enjoyed being at Reggie Lewis for the league championship. So that was a new thing for us, and it went very well. So the boys basketball team will be hold on here in the second half as pledge at least a share of the league title. Uh, Currently hold a 40 to 13 lead over Bromfield. Uh, they win tonight, it's at least a tie. They win Friday, they win the league outright for the first time in a long time. Uh, they shared the league title a couple of years ago, but this will be the first time since I believe the mid 90s that we could win the league championship on our own in boys basketball. Uh, junior Zach Iannacone and Tommy Bergen have been outstanding all season. They're averaging about 20 points each a game. Uh, and they're 12 and 3 going into tonight. Uh, they've already qualified for the state tournament, which will begin the week after February vacation. And they'll be hosting our annual General League Holman tournament uh, next Saturday and Monday, so the Saturday and Monday vacation week. Uh, they'll be hosting that tournament along host, uh, Kip Academy of Lynn, the Academy of Notre Dame from Tingsboro, and Ashland High School, the other three schools competing. And it's in memory of Air High legend General Lee Holman, uh, who played baseball and basketball here, but also eventually played for the uh, Harlem Globetrotters. So it's a memorial tournament in his, in his honor. Uh, girls basketball had a one and five start, but have uh, turned things around, are currently nine and nine, ranked 24th in the state division four uh, power ratings. Uh, they need one more win to officially claim a spot, but uh, they're probably gonna be in the top 32 regardless, so they're, they're gonna be in the state playoffs as well. Um, seniors Ava Murphy, Tess Eric Kelly, and Anna Montoya have been great leaders on and off the court. And our junior class is very strong. Emily Churchill, Warren Reardon, Grace Cormier, Malia Figueroa, and Taylor New have done outstanding jobs coming off the bench or in the starting roles. Uh, the boys' hockey team, which were called with Lunenburg, uh, they're 12 2 and 1, ranked 15th in the state. Uh, Ayer Shirley, sophomore Colin Holbrook, has played very well on defense, and sophomore goalie Tyler Sear has played very well on goal. He's kind of shifted between the varsity and the JV because we only have two goalies in the entire program right now. <laughs> uh, girls hockey also having a great year. It's a co-op with Lemonster and about seven other schools. I couldn't even tell you how many schools are in that co-op. It's a lot. Uh, girls, they're nine and five. They're ranked 24th in the state. And uh, junior Carla Iwa, uh, who's a three-sport athlete here, is one of the team's leading scorers and having an outstanding season. And we have three girls total with the program. The swim teams just placed fourth in the Midland Wachusett League which although the girls have won the league many years in a row, I mean, even combined with Littleton and Bromfield, we're still one of the smallest schools in the, the Midwest <laughs> in swimming. So they're coming fourth out of, I believe, 12 teams. It's pretty impressive. Uh, junior Kira Fallon won out of the eight dual meets. She won seven of the 200 free and 500 free events, and she's qualified for sectionals along with her sister, Neve uh, Fallon, and Sophia Andre, who both have qualified for sectionals as part of uh, multiple relay teams. I believe it's Sophia's on three relay teams and Neva's on two. So congratulations to that. Our cheer team, which is up at the gym right now, uh, working on basketball, uh, is preparing for several competitions. They're competing at Wilmington High on February 17th, at Reading High School on February 18th, at the Shepherd Hill Invitational on February 23rd, and then they'll return to Shepherd Hill on the 25th for the league championships. Uh, so they've been really working hard since the fall. To, two season sport, so it's been nice for them to be able to prepare, and we're expecting good things from them at the competition. Our middle school basketball teams come, uh, their seasons end on Thursday, it's been a great year. Uh, they have home games with Quabbin at 3.30 and 4.45. Uh, 
want to congratulate Coach Devin Williams on the boys' side and Dallas Neely, air air resident or air graduate Dallas Neely, Fitchburg resident Dallas Neely, who coaches our girls' team. And then you guys all got this email at some point today. Probably you haven't seen it yet, uh, but we'll be receiving our national banner from the Special Olympics North America uh, school-wide ceremony on February 16th. At one, it's actually going to be at 1:45. Uh, we're still ironing out all the major details, but for the most part, what's going to happen is it's going to be a ceremony at 145 with a few speakers, including somebody from Special Olympics Massachusetts, and then we're going to have an exhibition game between our unified basketball team and our staff. Uh, it'll be about a half hour, but it'll be a great event. I mean, it's a really great award. We're only one of 22 schools in Massachusetts to receive the award, and I believe it was 302 in the country. So it's a pretty good accomplishment, especially for a school. We're only in year six of unified sports. Uh, and there's schools that have had it for a lot longer that have not won this award. So credit to our, our, our entire staff. It goes down to the elementary school at Jackie Klein and uh, Megan Chase at Laura White and then Jackie Kucher and Skip, um, Trey Skipper and Devin Williams and Natalie Carroll at the middle school and then up here at Chad Lindstroth has pretty much been instrumental in running a lot of our programs. Nate Diffin before that who's our athletic trainer. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Paul Gitchild. Paul Gastingay, I know it was Paul Goodchild from years ago. <laughs> Paul Gastingay passed away a few years ago. She was really our first coach and helped me get this program started when I got here. And of course, the school committee and all of our administration over the years have been massive supporters of our unified program. So we're thrilled that we're being honored in this way. Uh, we're glad that the whole school can participate. We're, we're supposed to do it in November. We said we're going to wait it out until the gym was done. So now the gym's done. We're going to do a big ceremony in there and, and uh, celebrate. So. You're all invited, and hopefully some of you can make it. I know it's a tough, tough time at 145. Um, if you guys can make it, that would be great. Can I just add ASAF to that too, because they pro oh, yes. they're providing That's funds right. this year for the elementary yeah, unified ASAF sports. And they're gonna, we're going to have uh, programs at both schools this year. Last year we did not have it at Page Hilltop, uh, but Justin O'Brien, the phys ed teacher over there, is going to run a unified program starting in March. Oh, so nice. we just actually okayed all the sign-up sheets today, so it should be going out to the uh, students at Page Hilltop, hopefully this week. Yeah, so thank you to ASAP as well. Just nice to see General Lee's name in there. He was one of the nicest people I think I've, I've met. I went to school with him, and uh, the only person nice was his mother, Ellen. They were just really solid people, really perfect. So it's just nice to see his name in print. Um, the other thing, um, outstanding job on senior night. That was just so much fun because you always have that. I mean, you, you see the same parents if you go to, you know, girls, you say, you know, JV varsity, and you see the same people all the time, but having both varsity squads there with the parents from both sides and the cheer parents and stuff, that was very well put together and well received by everybody there. It was also nice, and I'm going to give credit to Matt Husk and Chris Tavares, who runs our youth programs, for really coming up with the idea of making it a youth night as well. So if it wasn't for them, uh, that got a lot more people in. So Matt and, and Chris did a great job of coming up with the idea and, and helping promote it. So we had a huge crowd at that. Yeah. And, uh, Boosters, our newly revived uh, Booster Club, did a lot of the work with the with the photos and getting the posters done. So it was a good team effort. And, uh, I'm glad it went really well. I think it was nice to bring everybody in. We would have done track that night too, but their, their banners weren't ready. So we're going right. to <laughs> yeah. another week or so. Because yeah. uh, there's a lot more track kids than there are. I think there's three times as many track seniors as there were basketball and cheer seniors. <laughs> but thank you. I thought it went well, too. That was, yeah, it was a nice it was night. Great. A good great. community night, for sure. If I may, um, on, the, um, on your tournament, the um, General Lee Holman tournament, what time are those? Uh, Saturday is at 1 and 3, and uh -huh. then Monday is at 2 and 4. So hopefully we're playing at 4 on Monday. <laughs> I mean, <we're> <laughs> We're playing Academy of Notre Dame on Friday at uh, 3, and Kip and Ashland are playing at 1. If I can play hooky more. <laughs> Close the bike shop today. Thank you. Well, thank you. Glad thank you. Glad you Thanks for coming down. That's yeah. great. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Renda, I said, can you get me the sports report? I said, of course. I'm just going to go to the gym. Makes it easy. That was much better than, than I, what I would have done, so thank you. <laughs> I think I got all the names right. Sometimes I mess up the names. <laughs> Not as much as I, I have to put Eve down because I always forget when her name comes up. I make sure it's right. <laughs> I like it when Charlie does it though because he sounds like Howard Cosell. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
high profile announcer for sports or whatever. All right, yeah, I'll take it. It's the best of the best. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. I know not every athletic director feels that way, so it's <laughs> nice to, to feel that way. Almost. Why would they feel that way? I mean, I come on. Say, uh, I, there's never been a time I've never felt supported by a school committee here. So. Great. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with the end of the game. I'm going to plug in what I am like. Sorry about that. Are oh, you taking it? I'm going to I'll grab it for you. Oh, I got it. You're going to trip over this. I am plugged in. Yes, I was. Perfect. That can be this. Could run on your batteries for a while? No, I'm plugging into the screen. Oh, okay. Got some new college acceptances. Oh yes, I forgot about that. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, we do have some new college acceptances. We have Embry Riddle Aeronautical University, Rhode Island College, Salem State University, St. Anselm's College, Stonehill, University of East Angela in the United, Ki uh, United Kingdom. I think that's probably a first for us. Uh, University of uh, Colorado Boulder. University of Massachusetts Dartmouth, University of Massachusetts Lowell, and Villanova University. All right. And that is it for the superintendent's report. Wonderful. All right. And I think I'm passing it over to Bill to walk us through budget update. Okay. Thank you very much. So we've updated the uh, drivers and projections sheet uh, for the governor's budget, which came out on um, January 24th. Uh, the governor's budget came out with $30 a student for Chapter 70 increase for uh, minimum aid districts, which we are one. Uh, we're hold harmless. So that's 102000 more than we had budgeted in FY24. Uh, transportation reimbursement, uh, we had budgeted 500000 last year. And the, the governor's budget, she came in at 485, 485,000 this year. So we dropped it. We want to be conservative, so we dropped it a little bit. Um, we dropped it to almost 15,000. Medicaid, we did see uh, since they expanded the pro the uh, the program a couple of years ago, we we saw initially a little bit of a, a decrease in Medicaid uh, funding, uh, but that has come, been coming back. So we're uh, still got to keep the number a little low until we get we, we make our mark of 106 uh, that we have in the budget for this year. Uh, charter reimbursement, uh, we have uh, budgeted 150,000. Uh, that's 60,000 more than we had last year. Again, here the, bud the governor's number was a little bit more optimistic. She had put it in 188, so I split the difference. I didn't want to go all the way to 188, so I kept it at 150. So overall, our uh, general fund revenues are 78,000 uh, uh, over last year's budget. In the middle section, everything is the same except uh, charter tuition out. Uh, our enrollment is down about 10 students for charter out. Uh, so we're dropping that number from 970 to 950,000 for this year. Um, and that's the governor has also done that. And for choice out, we're also dropping the number uh, 40,000 because our numbers are under, for choice in and out, we're underneath, are under 100 uh, students, both in and out, about 95, 96 uh, for the enrollments. Uh, so we dropped that number. So the, the, these increases are down a little bit over the prior version. Uh, but when we subtract the general fund, general fund revenue from the 1.4 million, it's about a 1 1.3, 1.37 it, impact to the um, to the budget for this year for uh, our cost drivers. The bottom section stays the same except for choice out. We dropped the choice uh, choice in revenue um, considerably because of the the numbers are under 100 for coming in. We we pay for salaries out of that for teaching salaries and circuit breaker. Uh, we budgeted level and we use that for out of district tuitions. Moving on, these are the cherry sheet estimates. This comes out when they do the governor's, uh, the budget process. Uh, there's uh, four more stages of the budget to come. The Senate, the House, uh, Ways and Means, and Conference Committee. Uh, so uh, hopefully this is the most conservative version. The, uh, the middle column is the governor's 
uh, local aid proposal. That's the 8.6 million for Chapter 70, tuition reimbursement at 188, and regional transportation at 492. Uh, Choice receiving tuition is pretty stable at 547,000. They have lowered our numbers for uh, choice sending and charter sending. Uh, so we've done the same thing in our budget and that's, we see a decrease in the charges uh, of 191,000. So we get our chapter 70 funding each month from the state and they, the, uh, the Department of Ed reduces our chapter 70 by our choice and charter sending tuition. So that comes right off of our funding um, every month. So overall, with those drops in the charges, uh, we're about $245,000 uh, higher than we were at the end of, uh, the, for the FY24 cherry sheets. And I'll keep updating this, this spreadsheet um, as we go through the process and how it updates as they, they become available. This is the foundation uh, budget calculation by the state for Air Shirley. Uh, takes all of our foundation enrollment students, which is all the, all the student, students that we're responsible for, students that go to Air Shirley from Air and Shirley, uh, choice out and, ch and charter out. Uh, we have 1,698 students in our foundation enrollment. They're spread across, across all these different uh, columns that have what school they're in or if they're special ed, English language learners uh, and out of, out of district special ed. And there's 11 categories down on the rows which have all the classifications for teaching and the Department of Ed calculates how much we should be spending to uh, educate our students in air. Um, so the total they come up with is $23,835,000, that's our foundation budget, and they, multi and they divide it by the 1,698 students uh, to get $14,037 per student uh, for our foundation budget. And that, that figure comes into the calculation for our Chapter 70. Chapter 70 calculation is on the left, that first that first row is the prior year, FY24. We got 8.5 million in Chapter 70 funding. Uh, so they plug in the foundation budget of 23,835 and subtract the required district contribution uh, from the foundation budget. That um, re required district contribution is set by the state and it's based on the town's ability to pay and their target, the uh, Department of Ed and Department of Labor or Department of Revenue set a target for each town uh, as for what they should be paying for the, the uh, district contribution um, based on their ability to pay. So they subtract that RLC of 15652 from the foundation budget and they say, okay, so our chap, we would owe the district 8.1 million for for chapter 70, but since we got 8.5 last year, they don't, they're gonna hold us harmless and they're not, we're not gonna get anything less than that. So they're gonna add $30 per student, uh, which is $50,940. Uh, we add that onto the ch chapter 70 funding we're receiving. So uh, there's majority of districts in the state are uh, minimum aid or hold harmless. Um, most of them, uh, the, f the calculations are funding gateway cities and uh, more urban urban settings. On the upper right, the top right is just a comparison from FY24 for to 25 for these same figures, and the bottom graphic is the uh, summary of the uh, Chapter 70 funding over the last several years. You can see it's pretty moderate to slight increase uh, most recently. They're trying to adjust for health insurance and some of the, the line items that they um, uh, did not keep up with inflation. So they are trying to make progress towards um, getting those lines back in order. So here is our uh, foundation enrollment and how it gets split between Air and Shirley. It's uh, dependent on the number of students uh, that make up our 1698 from Air and Shirley. So for FY25, uh, we have 972 students 
uh, in Ayer and 726 in Shirley that formed uh, the uh, district enrollment. Uh, up one for Ayer, down 15 for Shirley. And they take that required local contribution of 15652000 and they split it between uh, Ayer and Shirley based on the enrollment. And it ends up being uh, uh, an increase of 648000 for Ayer and an increase of 189000 for Shirley. Um, this is not in our drivers. This is uh, set by the state and comes in uh, into our assessment calculation. Uh, and it's a big piece of, of the um, annual increases. This is the town of Ayers apportionment of their RLC. Uh, town of Ayer and, and Shirley both belong to two school districts, Ayer Shirley and the Neshoba Valley Technical High School. So part of their uh, required local contribution goes to both, both districts. Uh, the top section is FY24 information. The bottom section is FY25. You can see the enrollment uh, numbers. Uh, Air being up one, Shirley uh, being down, um, I mean, Neshoba Tech down six for Air. And uh, they split 91% of the uh, re required distribution or required contribution goes to Air, 9.7 million. And almost 9% goes for to the Neshoba Tech. Uh, 926,000. So that their total increase for the two districts is $601,617. And we do the same thing for Shirley. Uh, we apportion it across Air Shirley and Neshoba. Uh, we have, we're down 15 students uh, from Shirley to the Air Shirley district. And Neshoba Tech is up six students from Shirley. So the bottom numbers here have $189,000 increase for Shirley for Air Shirley and $85,000, almost $86,000 increase for um, Neshoba Tech. Grand total increase for Shirley for the two districts. The required contribution is $275,000. Any questions on those? Oh, sorry. So now plugging uh, the numbers into the uh, assessment, uh, row number one has the numbers right from the state for Air and Shirley, the 9.7 for Air, 5.9 for Shirley. That is the uh, FY25 pre preliminary chapter 70 number that came out with the um, um, governor's budget. The second line uh, is a net school spending above RLC, which is everything that the towns of Air and Shirley already contribute up beyond uh, the RLC, the required lo local contribution. And that is split by the regional agreement, which uh, is a, a five year rolling average of the foundation enrollment. Basically, 57% to Air, 43% to Shirley. Transportation is the same exact calculation, it's just broken out and it's the same percentages, 57% to Air and 43 to Shirley. So we compare the numbers for the operating assessment um, to the prior year, FY24, and overall it's a 7.9% increase, 9% to Air, uh, mostly because of that increase to uh, the required local contribution and any of the drivers that we had in there already is, uh, is uh, really a, quite an increase. Uh, and then 6.3 for Shirley. We add in the debt, which is pretty stable um, with the notes on the high school renovation and the field project. Uh, and that changes the numbers downward a little bit. 7.3% overall increase, uh, 8.4 to Air and 5.8 uh, to Shirley. So we will continue to work on on these numbers. Um, I think the towns are looking for, uh, we wanted to put the numbers in there to show them what uh, the cost is uh, of doing business and keeping all, all these positions that uh, are servicing our kids. So, um, <coughs> but we also understand that we need to work with them within their means and 
uh, try to phase in, look for other funding sources. Uh, we'll be looking at E&D. E&D mm -hmm. uh, is uh, being certified. That's like our free cash, and um, we can use that. The school committee can approve transfers from the E&D. They could go into the general fund to lower the assessments. We can do transfers into capital stabilization, uh, uh, but that is, uh, once it's certified, should be certified by March 1st, we're hoping, uh, and then we'd be able to use it until June 30th uh, in the budget for next year. We have some, <clears throat> some other revenue streams that we, we plan on using to, to help bring that down. Um, what we was have it some last year? What were the numbers last year for percent increases for the two towns? I don't remember. It was like 2.6 to Shirley. 2.6 to Shirley. 3.2 to Air. 3.2 to Air. Well, yeah. air. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been asking some other, uh, ask another district, and uh, is anybody making any um, noise about doing an override or anything? Because I'm sure, if, I mean, we know what's going up. We know how insurance is going up and a few other things. So they have to have things going up in town also, right? And, you know, if the town, including us, mm -hmm. um, the community, um, has anyone made any, take a deep breath in saying anything about that that we've heard? No one has talked to us Not uh, uh, about an override. We, we feel that we can get these numbers into a manageable place where the, we can get the budget approved at both town meetings. But um, it won't be down at what it was last year. It so won't be. Last no. year it was, no. it looks like, oh God, I probably picked the wrong one. At this time last year, or this time, no. As of the 7th of March, sorry, this is the first time we pulled up, it was 4.8 yes. for yes. Shirley and 3.2 in air. That was also the first year of the field project that came yeah. out. Yeah, exactly. So that project, was the, the school assessment was only 2.6 and 2.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. One of the things that we will be doing from year to year is letting the towns know what it actually costs to do business. And I, I don't know if that has been done in the past. I, I know that many school districts um, do everything they can to get that assessment down, um, oftentimes without letting everyone know what they're doing and how they're funding these positions. But it, that's important to do because, as you can see, the entitlement grants do go down, competitive grants go away, school choice can dry up. And if these are positions that are important enough that you need them every single year, we need to take the steps to get those into the general fund. So, um, though, if the, if the towns themselves feel like they need an override for their other departments, obviously we would do everything that we can uh, to help them get that passed. We feel that we can get this into, though higher, um, into a manageable right? And, and, and if we would have been doing this, and, and again, many school districts do this, so it's, it's not that this was an uncommon thing to do. No, no. But if we would have been moving a position or two into the general fund since 2011, we certainly wouldn't be in the, the, the position that we're in. But we do such a good job as public school districts, I'm speaking in general here, not about Air Shirley, about keeping these assessments down, that when it gets to a point like this, people are shocked. And you, you speak of transparency in the budget um, quite often, and, and I appreciate that. I think we need to let people know what it is and why we want to move these positions into the general fund so that this type of shortfall doesn't happen uh, again in the future. But you also you don't want to cripple yourself in other other areas. To right, and positions. with the plan that, that, that moving money from E&D, using some tuition in, some of the building rentals, um, some competitive grants, um, one of which we have already received, and, and hopefully there will be more. We really don't think that we will. What, what ends up will cripple us in the, in the long run is not letting people know what it actually costs. Right. And then when we don't have those positions in the general fund and teachers need more support, like we do now because of the needs of the kids, um, we won't be able to provide it, right? right. So it is, it's, um, I, I think we're, we're kind of speaking the same language in different ways here, uh, but if we need uh, behavior technicians and we need BCBAs and we need reading interventionists and we're gonna need those for multiple years, which we do, then we can't always fund these through 
school choice and entitlement. Well, right increase, now, we just can't because the money's not there. Well, some of the increases that we've had, I think we're going to see more of, like English language learners and stuff like that. We're going to need more of that. Absolutely. Not less. It's not going to dry up. It's C not completely going to agree. Out, mm -hmm. You know. So some in the in the years past, where we were looking at a 2.4, 2.3% increase, if the increase would have been 3.1, 3.2 and those positions would have been moved from the entitlement into the general fund, we would be in much better shape now. Because that money, it, it would have been a smaller increase and that money would have been in the general Einstein fund expected. It. Well, it is, <laughs> and again, and please, this is a regular practice for many districts. Right, right. It's just not solid practice for us now because of how we're being funded by the state. So we need to change it. I think we have a good plan changing it going forward, and I think we can, uh, make this a two to three year process where hopefully uh, our plan is to, to have all 12 of those positions next year. Of course, things change. Um, you know, kids move in with, with um, some, some severe needs that have, have a big price tag and that could, that could change the outlook. But, um, you know, at this time, I don't feel like we would need to ask for an override. I'm not sure if you feel- No, no, I'm just saying, about that. you know, because sometimes when you, when you get to the towns and they see these things, <laughs> And they, they have increases also in everything mm -hmm. else, right. you know. And so from their overview, we haven't heard their overview as to what they're considering That's a good um, point. to be, you know. So I just wondered if you'd heard anything. Nothing from, from um, Ayra Shirley. I know some neighboring communities are considering some substantial um, overrides. Um, and we have, if I can find it quickly enough, we do have some percentages from local communities that are in the a very similar boat. Not not all of them, but some. I, mean, I don't have it open. Um, but we have a, a list of seven, seven or eight communities that are looking at similar increases uh, to the budget, um, including some that, that border us. Um, and quite a few that don't might. order us. <laughs> and, and quite a few that don't. And really what we're seeing, and I would mentioned this earlier, but this seems to be, I mean, it's tight for, for a lot of communities, but something is going on with small regionals because we're all in this the same boat. In some communities you would think wouldn't be, uh, they're, that are considerably more affluent. I, I believe Acton Boxborough is looking at an override. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what that one, that one is, eight million? Nine or 10 million. Nine or 10 million. Um, which, you know, you would think they might be a little bit more solid footing with their with their tax base, but but they're not. And I think some of it, we believe some of it has to do with the calculations for regionals. Mm -hmm. Well, and we never ever got our bus money that they promised us, you know. So, yeah. uh, and we'll never. I mean, that's a pipe dream. That'll never happen. Too bad, um, you know, because that was not delivered. Um, but. <coughs> No, I mean, it's, it's always good. Okay. These are some of the, um, Mr. Plunkett did find the document that we're speaking of. These, these are some of the increases that were shared. Uh, many of them were not shared. I can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's also important that we highlight, I think the last couple of years, we've been trying to kind of come back from COVID and meeting children's needs in the various, you know, alternative ways that we could. And so now that we're in a period of stabilization and what student need looks like, I think that that's also a driving factor here is we are um, kind of in an unknown space um, post pandemic um, where we're highlighting some other needs that maybe were not highlighted pre pandemic. Um, and as we've seen and historically, I believe if I'm reading, remembering correctly, anytime that you have any kind of major pandemic or disease outbreak, you do have a lot of migration and changes amongst people. Um, going different places, going where they can, meeting their needs as they can, um, that that is also going to then affect cost um, as well. So I just wanted to highlight that as well, that as much as we're you know looking to be proactive, we do have that additional element of coming from a major event that we're trying to stabilize from. 
the the, the need of our students mm -hmm. is different now mm -hmm. than it was pre-pandemic. There are there are more social emotional mental health needs now than there were, at least in, in Air Shirley from from the numbers that I've seen um, before I started. And if we can't meet those needs, we can't teach them. Mm -hmm. It's just if if a, if a student is coming into school hypervigilant, they're not able to learn until we can help them regulate. Mm -hmm. And we have some classroom teachers that are really talented at doing that, but if they are working with one or two students who need to regulate, they're not teaching. So this is where the adjustment counselors and the RBTs and these other staff members come into play, um, and, and they, they really are needed. And, and with, the, with the funding from um, the state and the feds, really what they're asking us is to make a choice between students' mental health and academic growth. And we don't want to make that choice. We want to provide we want to provide the mental health and social emotional support so that our students are available to learn mm -hmm. and that we can teach. Um, we think we can make that happen uh, by stepping, by having a, a two or three year transition plan. Anybody have any other questions? I want to make sure I didn't miss anyone. Yeah, just Actually, um, one question. Maybe I'm missing it in the spreadsheet, so let me know if I am. But is there a place that breaks down the revenue? I know you show like the revenue coming in and then where it's dispersed, but is there a place that's showing like preschools bringing in this revenue, um, before and after brings in this, um, the CAPS program, like the building rentals? Do you guys have something that's like breaking down the revenue compared to like past fiscal years and then looking forward? Not in this presentation, but that is something we can provide you. Certainly. Okay. I was just curious, kind of like where it looks now. Mm -hmm. Like, is that also going down? Is that an issue that like the revenue from those sources is decreasing? Well, or um, so for preschool, part of the issue is, and we're working on this now, is is collecting uh, the the so collecting the money. Okay. Uh, with um, extended day, we are in the black, which is good, but it's not any uh, amount of money that would have a huge impact on on this. Um, but it is um, self-sustaining, which is which is exactly what we want. Yeah. Um, anything extra upon that? I mean, we do pull money from that for utilities and um, overhead. Overhead. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but there isn't. They aren't so far ahead that we could fund multiple positions with that. I don't have the exact number, but we'll provide that for you um, okay. tomorrow or by the yeah. end of this week. Yeah. Whenever I was just um, the tuition in is a little bit different. That's that's more substantial. That's probably going to fund a, a position, and um, caps I believe is is forty six thousand dollars this year. Is that that right, Bill? Forty six caps. Uh, forty-six, yes. Forty-six. Yep. Okay. So Four classrooms that, in that office. could be uh, a, maybe a couple pair of professionals or a part of a teaching position. And so, you know, on a typical year, not substantial. But when you're when you're looking, it's twelve positions. That that that's a that's a nice chunk out of the seven sixty-eight, yeah, right? One, yeah. Yeah. And the tuition in is in another, and then ED could, we got received a competitive grant. I think I had mentioned it at the last school committee. It's one hundred fifty thousand for social emotional learning. Um, I need to talk with Jay Mooney about how much of that we can use for salary and if it has to be used this year or next year. But even if it has to do, be used this year, um, we can certainly journal some, some money over so that can take care of a salary that we've already paid for, which would free up other money in the general fund, which could help that bottom, bottom line. So, yeah. okay. you know, and then we're looking at retirements. And typically when someone retires at the top of the pay scale, most of the time we hire somebody more at the bottom of the pay scale so where it's 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 piecemealing this together so that this is a more doable um, number for the towns and this is we do some of this every year we certainly did it last year uh, knowing that the assessment was going to be high because of the fields project uh, being its first year um, so that that debt was going to uh, put that up so it's it's work we're used to doing we're doing a little bit more of it um, yeah. this year than we have in the past but um, we did receive our first payment for our students who are living in the shelter. That will certainly be helpful. Um, so that will offset some of the costs that we've already incurred. Uh, so that money might be able to be used for, for E&D next year to possibly replenish what we take out of it this year, which would then help us for the following year to hopefully take less out of E&D Okay. to transition less positions in. So do, you, do you see what I mean? So if we're looking yeah. at six positions this year, and I'm right now I'm kind of picking that number out of the air, <laughs> next year hopefully we're only looking at transitioning three in and floating a, another three positions through 
tuition in and caps mm -hmm. and other revenue streams. Uh, and then the following year, hopefully it's one and a half to, to two positions. And then I've, I think every year after that, we have to look. If we are funding positions through entitlement grants and school choice that are important, that we need year after year, try to move it to the general yeah. fund, right? And, and um, as long as it's a, a typical budget year, one position wouldn't increase that assessment astronomically, like to an 8.4. Yeah. Get sense. one in every year until you where you exactly. want to be. And then we're using those entitlement grants the way they're supposed to for innovation and for emergencies, right? A student yeah. moves in who needs a one-to-one, -one, and we didn't budget for that. Well, we can take that from school choice or possibly from Title I, right? So, but we're, we're, we've carried so many for so many years um, that that movement's difficult to do right now. Yeah. Is there any projection or any information on the shelter and kind of like, will those students still be there next year? Do they have any idea what's happening? So, yes, um, we believe they will be. Uh, there, there could be absolutely be movement. Um, some families yeah. could move, move out, new families could move in. Um, so that could change. What we're expecting at this point is to have the same number of students that we have right now. Um, there could be, uh, there's possible, possibility for an increase because there are students who live at that shelter who don't attend Air Shirley schools. They stay in their school of origin, which okay. we are footing the bill, half of the bill for the transportation of that. They could choose um, to transition into Air Shirley over the summer. Um, that would lower transportation costs. It would increase the reimbursement from the state, which is $104 a day, but it creates also more need, right? Mm -hmm. So it could yeah. we could need more. Um, it, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but it could be more um, English language learners, it could be additional special education teachers, depending on the needs of the children. And we don't know what those needs are because they're yeah. not enrolled with us. Um, but that shelter, the plans for that shelter uh, is to be there for a substantial amount of time, two, three, four years. Um, okay. So we, we don't have an exact date on that, but that was the answer we got, at least two years, probably longer, three or four. Um, I don't know if the funding will stay with, with that shelter that entire time. Um, we are expecting it, we are expecting it next year, which could also help us um, with some of these positions moving forward. Okay. And to get that number more manageable. Thank you. Jim, did you have anything? Yeah, we had, uh, it's been a long time, um, of course our board's changed over, but the, the finance boards in the town, the selectmen have changed over as well. We used to, and I, it's probably been 10 years anyway, <clears throat> uh, Jesse used to come in, um, uh, uh, MESC used to come in and do presentation for groups for how budgets are built because we have all these, this is by far the most complicated thing that most of the people on the FinCogs deal with, not in their, I mean in their own personal work, some of them do with much harder things, okay. but as this aspect of it, there isn't a lot of knowledge about that. I mean. I, I've not received any question. I remember when we were starting out, it was I mean, long discussions about how you get to you know, require local spending and above and, and how much is driven by the state and our contract and, and all of that stuff. So I don't know if either one of the FinComs or the boards would be interested in that general discussion on understanding exactly how this comes together or not. So at least you're starting on the same page. Mm -hmm. But I will say on, on the plus side, before it was all the discussions I would have was just a nuts and bolts thing on how the budget gets to, you know, what everybody wants. It's like, what's that number? What is the number increase? Sure. And, um, but they seem, I think they are more open because of what everything, of everything that's happened in the three years to talk about extra things that you have to do now that you didn't have to do before. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that didn't phase in slowly. It was just like, there you are and you see the types of challenges that you're faced with. I think we work well with the town. I know, I mean, especially on last year's budget sticks out specifically, surely had a really tight year. And I think this district did very well to give them what they needed, knowing that everything we gave Shirley, we'd have to take, you know, two times more out of the budget because it had to come on of air side. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't help one town without helping the other town, you know, so I think we fostered a good relationship with them. I just, I wonder if on the FinComs, if they think that would be a helpful thing, or I don't know where they are in their process now with creating their budget. Um, I would love to have 
Desi or even Mars come in right. and, and do that. Whether or not, um, obviously, we would we would invite everybody, including right. if we can have it here. I would invite the public to come right. to come take a look at that. Uh, mm. I haven't seen anything in correspondence that I've received, but that doesn't mean they're not offering it. Um, be happy to reach out to Desi and Mars to see yeah. if, if they could come do a presentation on that. Yeah. Uh, quite honestly, I, I'd love to see it. Mm -hmm. um, right. You know, it's, uh, I certainly have a lot more uh, to learn before I become uh, on this guy's level with yeah. the budget, but um, um, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. When you get in there, I mean, you would, um, I've seen two of them, and you're like, all right, I got a pretty good grip on this. Then you watch it go like, did not know that. <laughs> that was there all the time, and I just never saw it. You'll always get, no matter how close you are to it, you'll always pick up some things that you go like, oh, all right. And that, just that general knowledge to have everybody starting at the same place creates a more comfort level when you start negotiating what you can realistically do. Yeah. Anybody? Let's see if we can set that up. Um, uh, comment. So one of the um, components of our budget that is hitting the towns now, like we have these roles that we brought in and funded um, partially through ESSER 3, partially through other grants. Um, and I think, I don't know what folks' perspective on this is. There's a, I feel like we've been naming it as like a, because of the pandemic, there's social emotional learning needs and Mm -hmm. Social emotional learning needs have been there prior to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. They were escalated during the pandemic because mm -hmm. of the very real trauma that was happening. Mm -hmm. And I worry that in the framing of a like, because of, or so, like there seems to be this connection to the pandemic that we're making that mm. implies a, that need will go away. We don't wear it like, we've stopped having to buy masks. We buy less hand sanitizer. Like gotcha. toilet paper isn't like, you know, yes. like, and I, the reality is students have social emotional learning needs that need to be met in order for instruction to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since we started, I, I mean, in the beginning of the year, Charlie, you shared our MCAS data. Prior to us having these roles in place, we were underperforming the state. At this point, we are overperforming the state. Like we're seeing some return on investment for these. I don't know if that is compelling. I don't know if that is a thing that we want to message to our towns, but there is something to this idea of like, the, this isn't like a response to the moment. It was, yeah. and it's a real need that our towns need to be prepared and thinking about for the long term because mm -hmm. kids are people. People have, like, these are just basic human needs that need to be met in order to mm -hmm. engage. So I think that's one thought, and again, I. Feel free to just disregard it. Like that is a. <laughs> no, it's, a it's, it, um, it's an excellent point, and it's. I mean, you're right on. These aren't going away. It's not. I mean, the the pandemic sped this up, right? But for people who were here pre-pandemic, um, and, and Charlie, I think can speak to this. These were coming. It just it, it hit the fast forward button, and we know. And I, I shared this um, during my interview process. The success of our academic curriculum is dependent on our social emotional mental health supports mm -hmm. period whether it's a pandemic or not mm -hmm. if we have students who are i mean for instance a, a student going through divorce it's one of the highest ace scores it's going. one of the highest ace scores that, that that's out there right yeah. um uh, divorce and domestic violence i think domestic violence is number one it's student who is that can happen to anyone in any demographic and if that is happening to students they are using their cognitive bandwidth mm -hmm. to make their everyday environment look safe. They're not going to learn, or they're going to learn at a very low growth rate. We need to help students regulate that mm -hmm. and provide support for it, right? And if we don't, they're, they're going to suffer, and, and the, the results of the, the, the school are going to suffer, right? We care more about the student than we do necessarily those accountability results, but they go hand in hand. If you take care of that need, you're going to see your account, which we've seen. We, we want to see that happen at a, at a faster rate in a more steep line. Right. Um, but I think it's a fair point that we are receiving a return on investment on, on providing for the social, emotional, mental health, health needs of kids. The other consider, and again, I'm just like, food for thought. Like, mm -hmm. Take it as a suggestion. Feel free to leave it. For our local communities, we just renegotiated contracts for teachers and all our other staff. Mm -hmm. And while like I think we did good by our staff, certainly mm -hmm. like 
we still aren't near or mm -hmm. at any of our, not any of that. For all of our teachers listening, that was a gross <laughs> like <laughs> over like dramatization. But the reality is like we, there are other districts that pay more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need to be thinking, what is the total value proposition of working in Air Shirley? Part of that is the professional development that they're getting from, you know, Charlie, you're leading and thinking about what they're getting from their principal, what they're getting from peers. And there's things like, what are the supports in place that allow them to be a successful teacher? Mm -hmm. These roles are part of that value proposition and we could eliminate them, but we're gonna start losing teachers and then we're gonna need to do crazy things to salaries when we revisit these. Um, contracts. Yeah, we, we yeah, like we're again, losing teachers now to salary issues. Totally, mm -hmm. and, and it, but it happens. will get worse if all of a sudden we cut all the support roles that are there for them. Absolutely. And so it's, I think, just something for us to be mindful of when we're talking to our like. Yes, we are making this investment. There is a return, and there are other costs that could have you know made mm -hmm. this worse. Mm -hmm. But we are really, you know, doing our best in a lot of ways to keep to things in line. Right, like we're. That's an excellent point. I know you said we just settled. Teachers are out next year. We'll be negotiating. Yeah. It feels like we just did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just did with the, the last year was the, yes. the other yeah. three units. But it, it, I mean, it goes quick, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we literally always have one year where we're not. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it happens to be this year. So we'll be back in the thick of it. And the, this Newton strike, um, one of the sticking points was a, they were asking for a social worker. Social worker adjustment counselor yeah, can, yeah. can be in, interchangeable. We have that. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we, we put that in because we knew we needed it, right? It, that was a necessity uh, for our kids. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's working out. If you have an opportunity to talk to, to Beth Lewis, um, any of you who um, now has an adjustment counselor and did not have an adjustment counselor prior to, to this year, it was a, it was a different position, um, ask her, her thoughts on, on having that mental health support in the classroom, yeah. uh, in the school. I mean, it is making a world of difference in our internal data in that school in particular is showing that that's paying off right now. I mean, they're considerably ahead um, this year, especially in math uh, and in ELA, but especially in math than they were last year. And the biggest difference is the amount of support that, uh, that the, the amount of support and the timing of that support that kids are getting in the moment. So I, I agree. I, I mean, I just, yeah, I just don't know that your average citizen mm -hmm like appreciates that again like you hear a school counselor you're like oh the person who makes my schedule right like mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. so much bias and again you think about your experience in a classroom 30 40 years ago mm -hmm. and like what that meant and unless you receive services directly you might not fully appreciate it and i think there's an opportunity to really educate what is this investment because otherwise you're like oh there's these 12 ro roles that came mm -hmm. and like that's why there's a giant bump and like that's not the story that I think we tell. Yes, Joy? Well, I think you're not just treating the student. And because COVID affected everybody in this room, every family, every family member, every family relationship. And so we're seeing it coming out in the kids. But essentially, there's a, huge, a bigger problem. And until that grows away, it's not going to turn over. It's not going to be magic. I see it all the time. It's not going to be magic. It's going to have to develop or mature out, or what if, I don't know the word I want. Um, so you know, is this going to be one year, two years, three years? Well, let's say a fourth grader <laughs> till twelfth grade. That's eight years. You know, so it's not something. It's just going to magically evaporate. We're going to keep going with it. So, uh, I, Chris. Um, to your point, I think it's excellent. Like it resonates with me because when I think if you're like a visual person, now I grew up in the 90s, right? So there was Saved by the Bell, there was Boy Meets World, like there was a whole bunch of schools, um, um, TV shows that were in a school setting. So like, let's say we all were sitting here and we ran a clip of like, I think Saved by the Bell, Jesse was on the speed pills. And they were handling it amongst themselves as students. There was never any thinking in that time frame, not this time frame. There was no adult interaction in that. They were able to keep it. There was never an assessment. Um, and in those moments when they attempted to address social issues on that television show, if an adult was involved, it was a one-liner, 
you know, um, encouraging statement that still redirected back to academics, right? It was, I see this great person in you and you're really great and I want you to keep going, but I need you to get an A on that test. Here you go. Was the perspective that I think really reflected where we were as a nation when we look at social emotional um, needs of the student versus now. Uh, yes, it was a speed up for the, the pandemic. It just made it apparent that we needed to address it, right? Because the only commonality we had amongst our kids is that they needed to go to school. Um, so that's what highlighted it. So yes, it's always been there. Um, we may not have been aware as to how much it needed to be addressed and how interwoven it was in the classroom. And that's what we're seeing now. So. Um, I think especially to your point where we're looking at the foundational points of the, the budget, right? Like I absolutely can't stand math. I told Charlie that when I was sitting down and he was explaining things to me. I have an engineer as a mother and I almost got thrown out the house. Um, but I struggle with it, my own thing. But one thing that I can understand is concepts, right? So I can do the work, I may not like it, but if we're talking about the average person and we're talking about you know revenue and those things, the other elements I guess that would mirror that is what are the needs that we're meeting and how do we get to those needs? And then underneath that, we get to the numbers to explain exactly how we're getting there. Um, but I think what you said was great because immediately what I was thinking of was like a um, clip of having two scenes, like one scene play on one side from school setting in the 90s when we were watching TV of a popular show and then do one now or if it's flipping to an expectation that we have of our teaching staff. Um, it's really important. And sometimes what you're hearing from teachers who retire, but they may not necessarily want to is, you know what? There's just a larger need that I can't provide and I wanna give my best. So I'd rather maybe retire or come on in a lesser role in order to meet the needs of the students, which I think is selfless and honest and great. Um, but I really love that and I have some thoughts behind that that later on, um, Adam, you and I could definitely talk about if we're looking at kind of trying to get everybody in on that. But um, does anybody else have any comments, questions? We, um, we can certainly yeah. prepare uh, a communication that explains what these positions are and why we need them. Um, that, that would be uh, fairly simple. Uh, we can send that out. Um, both in the weekly communication as as its own document, um, happy to do that. I think it's a, a great idea. Um, as far as skits go, I, you know, you're not talking. You're not talking to the right guy. We could we could try to come Erica, up with something, you and Jim but I would are on be the skit committee. I would be looking for a more no, a more Thank you for not me. Yeah. Um. Awesome. Uh, thank you. I, I just want to take a moment and um, to acknowledge. Thank you all for moving forward. Um, for those that. It, are watching, will watch. Um, everybody is dedicated to this this role. I had a sudden emergency and couldn't be here. Um, and as everybody is committed to their role, um, they move forward. And then also we're in the background checking on me. So I appreciate everybody here and know like, no, it wasn't me just, you know, <laughs> being random. It was I had a need I had to have met before then. So thank you for everybody moving forward. Um, uh, for the school while I, I wasn't here. I appreciate you all very much. Um, Adam, do you have anything else as I orient myself? Um, um, well, we, sorry, just we sure. um, have gotten through the agenda uh, with the exception of we tabled for until you could arrive yes. the um, agenda item seven, school committee member roles and responsibilities. Yes. Due to my emergency, I do not have my handy dandy little notebook um, to review it, to, to, to review it. So I will table it till next time um, and make sure that I am prepared and ready um, for that because I want to do it justice and, and um, properly. So thank you. Um, and my chairperson's notes, that was my chairperson's notes. Thanks everybody for being great. <laughs> um, do we have any topics for discussion not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of this meeting? I'll just make an uh, editorial comment on our previous discussion about some of the things that we do now that we didn't do. To a certain extent, the schools and the towns are a victim of our own success, right? So we, we started the district both 
the Air School District and the Shirley School District were in terrible straits. And the towns had their own fear of issues so because of work that's been done to improve it. And we said, you know, good schools attract people, right? Mm -hmm. And if you take a look at what's happened with uh, building and property prices and the rest of that, that's what's happened. Now, when that happens, it also brings in a bunch of new people who are were east of here, right? And they're coming west of here mm -hmm. for what they consider value. And their, their outlook over many of the things that we talk about is different that we've seen here historically. They're much more open to these arguments over other things. I was meeting with a customer who just bought a house. He and his wife have two kids and they, they go to uh, uh, Larry White. And the house is probably, I don't know, I, I don't know what the exact would be, probably about six around there, which would make me gag, but that's where they are, two kids right there in this house. And uh, I said, they were looking at a house in Westford, and they said, we came here, we got like 200 less for 30% more house from going from there to here. And, and if somebody told me my taxes had to go up a thousand dollars next year, I'd be like, what do I, that's like, why are we even talking about that? I mean, a thousand dollars, that's like four months of cable at my house. You know, it's the, that mm -hmm. the people that we're speaking to when we start to take some of these issues, that has changed dramatically. When we formed the district, we had a lot of retired mill workers, fixed income, that sort of stuff. Not that that element isn't there, but it's a far less percentage in the people who are here that are new and some of the people who have been here for a while are open to those types of discussions and they know that those things aren't free. But it has to be couched properly to show that, you know, we're not just throwing money. <coughs> mm -hmm. It has to be targeted and you have to be able to to have the background behind it. But I think the, the audience has changed. And that's something that we have to recognize when we put these things together. Yeah. Awesome. I, Thank you, Jim. Okay, so communications. I know Kevin is out. Does somebody have the communications? I've got them up if you want me to. Yes, please, Chris. All right, announcements for February 6, 2024. Wednesday, February 7th is a 90 minute early release for grades preschool through 12. Late start for the preschool and professional development for teachers. Lunch will be served. Dismissal times, high school and middle school, 1250. Law and Page Hilltop, 145. Thursday, February 8th, also a 90 minute early release for grades six through eight for conferences. Lunch will be served, dismissal, 1250. Thursday the 8th, Page Hilltop PTO meeting, 630 to 730 at Page Hilltop. Friday, February 9th, early or 90 minute early release for grades six through eight conferences. Lunch will be served, dismissal 1250. Monday the 12th, office hours with chairperson Erica Spann, six to eight. It's remote and I'm assuming the link will be in a communication. It is, the link doesn't change. Great. Mm -hmm. um, Wednesday, February 14th, school committee meeting, 6.30 at the middle school library. Also Wednesday the 14th, the ASEF meeting, seven o'clock at the Air Shirley Regional High School Library Media Center. Uh, Thursday, February 15th, office hours, Erica Spann, school committee chairperson, six to eight remote. Friday, February 16th, Special Olympics National Banner Ceremony, 1.30 at the high school. And Monday, February 19th through Friday, February 23rd is no school for February Vacation Week. Awesome, thank you. All right, so we do not have an executive session, so I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I'd make a motion we adjourn, if I can see the clock at, it 8 looks like 8 Four. Three. Three. Four. Do I have That's a second? Computer. I've got my side. Second. Ashley seconded Michelle, just so you heard it. <laughs> all right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, meeting adjourned.